What's up, I'm Steve. Today I'm gonna to run you through my February solar update, have a look at whether north panels produce less power on a sunny day, and find out whether I went with the Daikin heat pump or a Cozy 9. Hi, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to run through my solar update for February, talk you through the production figures, the costs and the savings, have a look at the Tigo monitoring app to see whether the north panels have been producing less power on a sunny day, which I think is down to the ridge tile casting a hard shadow onto the northern side. Also, we've had our heat pump survey completed, we've signed the agreement, and where we have an install date of the 14th of April. So stick with me and I'll talk you through which one we went with later on in the video. Just to give a quick system overview, we've got 18 440 watt ICO all black panels giving us an 8 kilowatt peak. These are fitted with 10 Tigo optimizers only to the north and south panels at the rear of the house. These are linked back to a 8 kilowatt Sunsync hybrid inverter, a 15.5 kilowatt hour Fogstar battery, and we've got a 7 kilowatt Zappy charger and an MGZS EV, which is the 44 kilowatt hour battery. Here we have the daily production figures for February. As you can see, it was a fairly dull start to the month with it picking up a bit towards the end. We had a couple of low days at 1.1 kilowatt hours with a maximum high of 21.1 kilowatt hours right at the end of February. Overall, this produced 215.4 kilowatt hours for the month. Looking over at the Tigo portal to see how the north and south panels have performed, you can see the daily production figures on the right hand side with the little small light green shaded areas as the reclaimed base. The north panel was produced a total of 27.8 kilowatt hours for the month, with the south producing a total of 86. Overall, the reclaimed amount was 3.38 kilowatt hours, which was more than half of what we reclaimed last month, giving us a total reclaimed amount of 3.4%. This was a bit of a strange uh, results. What I've done is I've gone into the Tigo portal and picked out the daily production figures with the panel layouts and I've highlighted the north panels in red boxes. As you can see the most days the north and south panels on dull cloudy days are fairly similar in production figures however when the south panels really start pumping out some power the north panels really drop down. I think this is because the brighter the day is, it's casting a harder dark shadow onto the north panels, which will explain the drop in performance from the north ones. Here we have a breakdown of the, how each of the arrays have compared to each other and what they've contributed to the system. The north panel was producing 27.8 kilowatt hours, the east panel was producing 101.6, and the south panel is producing the 86 kilowatt hours, giving us a total of 215.4 kilowatt hours for the month. As you can see, the north panels are doing slightly more than they were last month, which was up from 10% to 12.9%. The south panels are down at 40%, or 39.9%, and the east panels are doing the rest at 47.2%. Over in the Miney portal, you can see that we're still adopting the similar strategy from January, which was short, sharp bursts of charging. Generally around about half nine, ten-ish, I'd add an extra 15, 20-ish percent to the car for 11 o'clock, allowing us an extra intelligent Octopus Go charging slot so we can top up the home battery to back up to 100% to see us through the rest of the day. Overall, we've added 298.4 kilowatt hours to the car, giving us approximately 800 miles of driving. I have reset the trip meter for March, so fingers crossed I'll have some better figures next month with some efficiency figures. Here I've added a table just to start recording the monthly totals. Obviously, we're a few months off getting some overlap between one year to the next, but it's a good way to start recording it. Overall in 2024, we recorded 2,934.4 kilowatt hours, and so far in 2025, we've got up to 353.1. 
So this brings us on to the bit that everyone wants to know, how much does it actually cost us and what have we actually saved this month? As always, the rates that we're comparing are at the top, which is our Intelligent Octopus Go rate of 7 pence per kilowatt hour for the off-peak, 25 pence per kilowatt hour peak rate versus the 24.86 pence per kilowatt hour for the price cap rate, and we get paid 15 pence per kilowatt hour for everything we export. Off-peak, we've bought in 1,026.6 kilowatt hours. Peak rate, we've used 35.3 kilowatt hours, which is only 3.4% of our total energy use. That's means we've put in that battery to top use. Total imports for the month were 1,033.8 kilowatt hours. We've exported 151.3 kilowatt hours, which if we compare this to the price cap rate without any solar on the 1,033 kilowatt hours we've actually used, would have mean we would have spent 265 pounds and 78 pence. If we take into account what we were paid for the export and what we've paid for our import, mostly on off-peak rates, brings our net octopus go bill to £58.55. This means we've saved a total of £207.28 for February alone. Obviously this excludes the standing charges, the saving sessions and any solar we've actually used within the actual month. So payback and is this all worth it? As a reminder, we spent a total of £12,390 on our solar system. And back in 2024, when we had the system commissioned, we saved a total of £1,139.09 in the first year. So far in 2025, we've saved a total of £404.14, meaning we've only got £10,846.82 left to pay back on the system. Having a quick look at how that breaks down, in the first year we did 9.2% of the return and so far in 2025 we've got 3.3% leaving us 87.5% left. Do I think the solar is worth it? Going by these figures and if we're averaging close to £200 a month saving I'd say it's definitely worth it. We're high users of energy and I can't see why we didn't do this sooner. So seeing how well our solar system has been able to pay itself back and how well it's been performing, naturally we start to look at whether or not it will be more cost effective to run a heat pump over a gas boiler. I've been tracking our spending on our gas usage for the last year with Octopus and how much energy that then uses and aggregating the two figures together from last year to this year because for some reason Octopus didn't quite pick up our smart meter correctly on the gas for the first two months. We've been spending around about £900 a year on gas, which means we've got an approximate usage of around about 13,000 kilowatt hours per year. So could we actually halve our heating bill if we switched over to a heat pump? Let's have a look at a few of my assumptions. Starting with the 13,000 kilowatt hours of gas that we buy in, obviously our boiler is only 90% efficient, so that means we're only getting 11,700 kilowatt hours of heat out of the boiler. If we were to get a heat pump that could average a scop of 3.5, this would mean we'd get down to 3,345 kilowatt hours of electric for the year. If we assumed we could get our average kilowatt hour down to 15 pence, this would mean our bill would be 502 pounds for the year. Or if we could get it down even lower, closer to what we're paying at the, our average rate at the moment, which is 8 pence per kilowatt hour or lower, this would get us down to £267 for the year. So after getting a little excited on how much we could potentially be saving on our gas bills by switching over to a heat pump, we contacted Octopus Energy and had them out to do the heat loss survey to see whether or not my figures were anywhere near correct. Fortunately, the heat loss survey was carried out and it came in roughly in line with what I had made my assumptions at in terms of how many kilowatt hours we would need to run the heat pump for. We had two choices to go with on the final quote. It was either the Daikin or their own Cozy 9. There was a lot of back and forth as there was very little information available on the Cozy 9 versus the Daikin. And after a long debate, we made the final decision as to which one we would go for. And the winner of that was the Cozy 9. So why did we pick the Cozy 9 over the Daikin? That's going to be for a future video, so like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll have a video out as soon as I can for the pros and cons as to which system, why we went with the system we went with.
Hopefully, we've demonstrated again that even in the winter months, solar really can save you money, so it's definitely well worth the investment. Join me in the next video. Thank you. Bye.